Hello, my name is Michael West and I'm the CEO of Ajax Therapeutics. Today I'll be discussing a preprint article in the journal BioArchive that relates to tissue regeneration and aging. The paper has important implications for cancer diagnosis and therapy as well. In doing so, I'll be making certain forward-looking statements that have associated risks and uncertainties. And so we refer you to our filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission for more detailed information about the company. The world's population is aging, and this is driven in large part by the demographics associated with World War II. We've all heard about the baby boomers. And so around the world, uh, while there are about 130 million people over the age of 65 in the year 1950, by the year 2050, that number will become 1.6 billion people. And the problems of aging and the costs associated with it, some 80% of all healthcare expenditures in the United States, for instance, is associated with chronic and degenerative diseases. And so we can think of Parkinson's disease, the leading complaint of aging, uh, chronic uh, arthritis, and so on. We say chronic because these diseases don't go away and tend, they tend to get uh, worse over time. And at the core of these diseases is the body's innate inability to regenerate a tissue that's damaged as a result of wear and tear or some other disease process. In the realm of scientific discovery, we often see researchers getting important clues from nature. Many of you have heard of animals that have the amazing ability to regenerate parts of their body after trauma. A well-known example is the Mexican salamander shown here. It can regenerate an amputated arm or leg nearly perfectly. And amazingly, it can even regenerate other tissues like the brain as well. Another example can be seen in planaria, or commonly called flatworms. These animals can be sliced in two, and the head will grow a new bottom half, and the tail will grow a new head. It would seem logical that the cellular and molecular mechanisms causing such profound regeneration are simply those that led to the formation of the animal in the first place, that is, the process of embryonic development. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could learn the molecular machinery that caused this regeneration to happen and apply it in medicine? Can you imagine the consequences for aging and age-related disease? An early clue came from the work of Henry Wilson, who showed that some animals, like marine sponges, could be disaggregated into individual cells, and then the cells could reassemble themselves back into an intact sponge again. In this video, you can see our scientists repeating this famous experiment. Our marine sponge is taken as disaggregated into separate cells in a dish under a microscope. And then in this time-lapse video, you can see the cells of the sponge recognizing and adhering to one another to reassemble new baby sponges. So we now recognize that there are cell adhesion molecules on the surface of cells called cadherins that allow cells to recognize each other, somewhat like Velcro. Uh, each cell having its own version of the molecule, allowing cells to stick together. Of course, the human body or the mammalian body is composed of many hundreds of different types of cells, so such a cell adhesion system would have to have hundreds of different kinds of Velcro to effectively regenerate something like a limb. But if such a system existed, it could allow for the complex organization of a tissue uh, such that with time and simply uh, by chance, these uh, cell adhesion molecules could cause the reaggregation of cells and the rebuilding of tissues to reform even a complex tissue. This is the focus of the paper we will discuss today. Our preprint is published in BioArchive and is available online. It's authored by scientists at Ajax, our subsidiary reverse bioengineering and other collaborators shown here. And it's titled, Differential Expression of Alpha, Beta, and Gamma Protocadherin Isoforms During Differentiation, Aging, and Cancer. The story really begins with a scientist uh, called William Dreyer at Caltech. 
He, with Leroy Hood in 67, published a theoretical paper in which they proposed that there may be a very complex system of cell adhesion molecules that allow for the organization of the body and its development during embryogenesis, something he called the area code hypothesis. Such a cluster of genes was indeed reported years later, called the clustered protocadherin locus. However, most of the research relating to these genes was performed in the brain or the central nervous system as opposed to the rest of the body during embryonic development. In our paper, we show that the clustered protocadherin genes are differentially expressed in embryonic cells compared to adult counterparts. This is significant because human beings share with the Mexican salamander and animals such as planaria a profound capacity for scarless regeneration early in our development. Furthermore, the complex nature of the genes allows for hundreds of different types of cell adhesion, like the hundreds of different kinds of Velcro I mentioned earlier. We also show in the paper that the cell adhesion genes are re-expressed abnormally in cancer. That means that this new insight may lead not only to improved technologies to track and induce tissue regeneration, but also to diagnose and treat cancer more effectively. Lastly, we show how the expression of these genes is changed when cells reach the end of their lifespan. This, together with the potential regulation of the genes by nuclear lamin proteins like lamin A, a gene that's mutated in the premature aging syndrome known as progeria, and the presence of age-related changes in methylation in the locus lead us to believe that the clustered protocadherin genes have much to teach us about inducing regeneration uh, in aged patients and in cancer. We have filed patent applications on this discovery, as well as other innovations we've made at AGEX Therapeutics and Reverse Bioengineering. We plan to implement these new technologies in our induced tissue regeneration program, targeting some of the largest unmet needs in medicine, the chronic degenerative diseases associated with aging. The paper is freely available online. Thank you.